did you basically keep everything that you had in crypto and then um, realize that it was on starting to repeat itself uh, in 2015, 2016. I that was also like when Ethereum was coming into uh, into form. Uh, were you familiar with what was happening in the Ethereum landscape? Are you a co-founder of Ethereum? <laughs> um, no, I'm not a co-founder of Ethereum. I actually took that out now. I got the horrible blue badge. Um, took it out of my bio. But um, <laughs> the what I was, I guess, um, what I, I, I try and do, I guess, is make sure that when it's, when everything looks terrible, you're not in your most vulnerable position. Cause like, it always looks horrible at the bottom. It always looks like it's going to zero. Um, and the only way that you can be objective about that is if you're not at the max pain moment of like, you know, maximum drawdown. So I would always try and make sure like you, it's really easy to have conviction if you don't have to sit through the drawdowns, I think. And then you can identify, okay, it does look like it's recovering. Let's do it. Or this looks like it could be a bottom. I'll buy here. I'm willing to lose 10 to 30% in case I'm wrong, <laughs> but like surely the risk from buying here can't be like, it's, it's not what it was. Yeah. <laughs> so I, I think it's important to like all, that's why I, I, I think, I think the hodl meme is like, um, is, uh, it's, like, it's a bit controversial for me. Like I, I think it is really, really good for a lot of people who are not going to look at crypto all the time and going to be disciplined about hodl. You can say it's a think, bit controversial, but, and this is just, you know, from memory, but I think the, to paraphrase the quote, I think you said something along the lines of hodling is for poor people. <laughs> at the absolute top, yeah. <laughs> Look, it was at the absolute top. It's like if you hodl now, you're going to let all of your gains, you're going to see them evaporate and you're going to be at the bottom thinking like, what if it is over? And if you think the chance of Bitcoin not making it is 30%, like not being a thing in like, you know, a bunch of years, um, then what what percentage do you think it will be when you're at the absolute bottom feeling absolute max pain and your car breaks down and you need some of that money and you're be you become a forced seller or like do, does a percentage that you think it doesn't make it go up so if there is a chance you think it do, it doesn't make it and you think you can't be disciplined i do think it is better to um sell when it's reasonably high and um to buy back when it's reasonably low, because I feel it's easier to have that conviction um, if um, you're not just sitting through massive pain and like you're able to live a life that you want along the way. Um, at the same time, this is one of the old um, models of uh, of crypto. Like, a, if, like if you look, <laughs> if if you look at the like historic of how it's worked historically, it'll work perfectly. If a super cycle comes, it will destroy people because they'll sell after the first three years and they'll go up for seven years and they never get to buy. So I that's why I think it's controversial, right? Because like I think like anti-hodl at the uh at the absolute 2017 top was like definitely the right position to be in, but I don't think anti-hodl is the correct position to be in for the entirety of the future. And for 95% of people, or 90% or 70%, I don't know, um, they probably should just like hold and like not look at it because markets are hard and they're designed to strip you of your money. But like what I, I did and what I try to do is make sure that I don't have to have conviction at the absolute bottoms um, and not sitting in massive drawdowns. Um, just because I think it makes it easy, like mentally easier for me. Um, and like, it's much easier to buy the bottom if you're not emotional about it. Did that cause you to have like fake out um, false tops or something in 20, 2017, especially sticks out in the sense that it was such a large cycle, you know, $200 at the bottom, all time high breakout, 1200 and then go to 20 K like after it topped at 5 K and goes back down to 1800 or whatever it was, you know, three, three K to 1800, five K to 24, you know, those types of like 50, 60% drawdowns, uh, at least on Wix. Um, did you, were you looking at some of those and thinking, all right, it's over, you know, I need to be out. Or were those periods where you had started to prepare yourself for a drawdown that you can confidently buy or how did you, how did you approach that? <laughs> Yeah, so I, um, um, earlier on, 
when I first got into doing this, I was, I think I was much better at it. Now, um, I, every time there's a drawdown, I go like, what are the possible scenarios that could be happening? Like try and calculate the probabilities of each of them or else loads of them say it's over. And I can really think about the ones where it's over uh, in great depth. Um, so like every time there's a major dip, I think it's like very reasonable. Um, and I certainly like personally consider what is the probability chance that this is the top now and the higher you go, that probability chance <laughs> increases, yeah. at least personally for me, like you have to estimate these probabilities, right? Like it's not science. You just go, what, what do I think? Do I think it's over? And all the way up in 2017 on every single dip, I was like, okay, could this be it? Like, the, it looks the same every single time, right? Like, um, and there's not a huge frame of reference for how high we're going. You could, it could have been over at the like 3K top or 4K top and done a double bubble similar to 2017, and that would have made sense. Um, um, so I like equivalent of where we are right now, basically relative to 2017. Yeah, perhaps. Yeah. Yeah. So I think it's like always very reasonable to consider those things and like people that advocate for like the, the, the lack of thinking, like <laughs> it's like, no, it's not. It's like, it's just like only going to go up. They say up only and stuff who say shit like that. <laughs> um, but like those, I think that's like quite bad. Like, I think people should always be considering, um, if you're actively trading these things or trying to always be considering what is the probability chance that it's over. And yeah, like when we got to, I think the, there was a dump at 10 K or 14 K or something. Yeah, yeah. And I, I was like, right, I'm selling um, five, 10, seven percent off all time high, and I'm going to rebuy all time high breakout. And I, I did that. I sold a little bit too early and then rebought five or five or 10 percent higher. Um, because my logic was if this nuke is the one, if it's over, um, then um, I want to sell as close to the top as possible. And if it's not over, I miss 10, 15% upside, worst case scenario. And at this point in the cycle, that's very reasonable for me to do that. Um, so I, 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 I did that and I think that's like totally fine um, to do. If you do it on every single dip, eventually you've just missed out on <laughs> massive, massive, massive upside. So you only do it when you start to feel like, uh, or at least I only do it when I start to feel anxious or something. Um, when we hit the um, uh, the actual top around 20K, I was already selling before. And I was like, is any minute now this chart looks disgusting? Um, and I basically got rid of everything before um, the top. And then the drawdown was so much larger than the previous drawdowns, I think. I don't remember. But it was like over over 50% or around 50% oh, or something. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Did it go to like 10K or 11K? I don't remember. The, but um, there was a, I mean, it was pretty quick all the way from like 20K to about 5,900. Like it went sub 6K quite quickly, but sub 10K really, really quick. Uh, yeah. The first nuke the was sub 10K, it bounced to 16. 10, yeah. And yeah. then from 16 to like 5.9. Yeah. I was in the car with my dad um, going somewhere um, and I rebought everything around 11 or 12 or something. I thought maybe I'd done it too high and it stopped just below 10, I think. And then. I was full doomer. I think I tweeted it's going to 16K and then going to eight or six or something. And it went to 17 and then went to six. Yeah. Um, but I like I think deploying that same strategy would have been fine, like trying to sell 15% below the all time high and buying uh, a breakout um, would have been fine. But then like people were doing like, oh, it's 33K by July. Don't worry, it's just a dip, continuation type messages. Um, and I didn't really believe in those um, so much because the chart would have just looked weird. But like the chart looks weird now. I'm in uncharted territory as per my like mental model for the market now because of Bitcoin chart looking so weird. So um, people have different systems. They have different like ways of thinking about stuff. And I think a lot of people's approaches to markets are just comfort tools that allow them to stomach it because <laughs> it's not about so much being smart. It's about having like the grit to like, sit through those drawdowns when you still think you're right and um, hold on to stuff when you're like, you have more in your balance than you thought you ever would. Um, so I think having those models um, for yourself is useful. Other people having models and identifying what their models are is useful, um, but no one's always gonna be right. <laughs> like, there's no way that someone's just like, 
like has the perfect model that's always always right it doesn't make sense uh, only